Okay, so now we can get to putting the wheel back in. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get this back up. Move that board over. Ouch. Move this board over. Now remember, if you had the deluxe bags on, it would be just a little bit Not a lot, but a little bit extra complicated because you're gonna try and maneuver uh, underneath those bags, but we don't have them on, so that's fine. All right, now, all right, so let me bring you a little closer. Let's back this up a little bit bring you a little closer because I want to show you something so here is the indentation that I was telling you about okay and here all right now here is your brake bracket this is your brake bracket okay you're gonna want to make sure look now you have the inner indentations here okay so this is going to have to go in like this. Now I got to clean up these. All right. So you're going to want it to go in like this and it's going to slide on pretty much like that. All right. The only thing with that is you got to get it on there with the wheel. So you want to try and make sure that this is on there. You are you're putting the wheel on and you want to just try and make sure that your, this is inside of that indentation that's in the swing arm because if not it's going to be a real problem trying to get that on so just try and make sure that that's in there and it's it's in place that way once you torque that axle nut down all of this stays put okay so we'll cover that all right so while i had that brake bracket out i figured you know what let me clean out those little metal contacts in here clean them out put a little bit of grease in them and get them looking all get them looking real nice all right let's get this back focused okay so now let me get this wheel in get everything in place so you're gonna look over your axle as the manual says you know you can check it and make sure that it's not uh there's no damage to it and everything is as it should be and pretty decent I like to clean off my caster plates whenever I get a chance it's a little easier to do it now than to try and uh, to do it later on. Ask me how I know. All right, put that in. And if you have the deluxe bags on, when you actually go to put this, put the axle in there, just uh, put this little plastic plate on first onto the onto the front of the axle put that on first underneath the bag otherwise you won't be able to get it 
otherwise you're gonna have a hard time getting it in the camber plate now I put I put a little light coat of oil on the axle but not on the threads if it does get on the threads then just clean off the threads because you really don't want it on the threads but on the rest of the axle that's fine now you're just going to want to lean it up somewhere so I'll lean it up over here on the garage door okay now I get back to trying to get this wheel on for you all right so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna lift this tire up and put it on to I'm gonna put it on to put the, the scissor jack on underneath it okay which is gonna be a little awkward but gonna want to watch the belt okay make sure your belt doesn't kink up on you oh. turn that around so I can see just to make sure the camera angle is pretty good okay good all right now that brake bracket need to go a little further in all right all right I think that's kind of good Now, I'm going to slide that brake bracket in because you want that to be at least somewhat in place. But I need to raise the tire up before I can do anything really because it just needs to be higher. And you got to take a little weight off of the jack so that you can turn it effectively. Ask me how I know. All right, now I gotta slide the the brake tool on. And you gotta jack it up a little bit more. Sorry, the brake bracket. You're gonna slide that onto the rotor. All right, because it has slots that fit into the rotor. Up a little more. Basically the scissor jack it really it really helps you with all of this you know and you can kind of fine tune it as you can see can you see that where I got the hole there showing okay so at least now you can you can get that axle in there all right once again you're gonna take your axle all right now remember if you've got the the Lux bags on there you're gonna want to put this on first this little plastic piece you're gonna want that at the beginning all right but because we don't have the bags on, we're not going to worry about that. You're just going to push that in, all right, and push it all the way, all the way through. It should go all the way through. Sometimes it won't. Okay. Hold on to the back of the wheel and, you know, just kind of try and work it on through. Sometimes it, it, it may not want to, but... 
you know, we'll try and we'll try and uh, get it to uh, get it to play nice. <sighs> Nice and clean. Let me see. And I can I can feel just put lightly putting my finger on the other side. I feel the axle coming right through. Okay. Now I'll just I'll need to check my alignment. Put everything. So I like that loose point. Okay, nice. And now it's in. Okay. Check the other side and you'll see the threads pop through. Okay. So now you look over. Just one whatever you do, make sure you don't forget that brake bracket. Alright. Now you can uh, you take out your scissor jack. You can see just how much help that scissor jack is man that that scissor jack is a savior just because it gets the tire up there and um, it just saves you a lot of time I've had so many little hoopty cars that whenever I end up donating them from putting so many miles on them I uh, always 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 take the, take the scissor jack out all right so that's done and we can actually go ahead and put the belt on. Wheels far enough forward. Okay. Put the belt on. Now it's a good time if you if you don't or haven't. It's a good time to inspect your belt and make sure you don't have any notches or any type of damage in your belt. So if you haven't done so, you can do that now. Go on the other side and put this plate in. Actually, because we're kind of done with this side for now, except for alignment, we're going to take the camera to the other side, so we'll be right back. Okay, so at this point now, we are ready to put our bracket back on, our, our caster bracket back on, but first... I'm just going to clean up this little area here. Also it makes it easier for you to see your little indentation mark which is right here for your alignment. You have one down there and you have one on the top. All right. All right. So, remember what I said? Your bracket goes on like that. Then you have your your washer that goes Oh, clean that off too. Jeez. Okay, yeah, just had to clean that off a little bit. Alrighty, so your washer goes on, then you can put your nut. And I will post the torque specs. I actually, shoot, I actually probably need to go look it up myself. Okay, alright, so then that goes back on, but you're not going to actually tighten that down yet because you still need to do your alignment through your brackets. Now, what you're going to do is here, because my battery is dying, what you're going to do is you're going to reset your marks back to what you saw them at at your picture 
all right so with this as you can see there's some marks on here okay right here you got the 10 as you can maybe you can probably see that we'll zoom in a little bit all right there we go right here we have a 10 and then we have the 20 which most chances are you're not going to really have to get down that low but uh anyway for for this bike we're going to be putting 10 pounds of pressure on the belt in order to check where the tension is so you're going to want to set this little rubber piece right here down over the 10 and this is the piece that you're going to push on push that up and once that reaches to right here then you know you're putting 10 pounds of pressure onto the belt this is the part that i'm going to put onto the belt here this here okay which is going to go into this slot here all right and you're going to basically end up pushing up onto the belt uh i'm not gonna actually be able to get exactly under it i'm gonna be just like a little off to the side but you know we'll actually we'll be able to get at least some sort of a decent measurement to know what we're working with all right and each one of these increments they said is five millimeters as per the manual or uh, 0.20 if i'm not mistaken 0.20 of an inch it said oh, 0.20 let me see uh, yeah each one is five millimeters uh, 0.20 inches so you have to basically use those as your guide and to tighten them you're gonna be turning these nuts over here let me show you to tighten them uh, what you're gonna have to turn is that axle nut that's right here if you remember that remember i was showing you that you're gonna have to turn that right there and when you give each side if you turn this side a certain amount of turns and you can just count the little hex sides if you turn this side a certain amount of turns you're gonna have to turn the other side at the same time so if you turn this side one turn you turn the other side one turn and then basically what you're gonna need to do is check and make sure that both sides are even because you really need the alignment of the wheel to be in line with the front wheel, okay? Okay, so there's two ways of checking this. You can check it either on the kickstand or you can check it like on the jack, like how I have it now. Most of the time, the way that I check it, I check it on the, on the uh, stand. Now on the stand, they're saying that you should have 0.16 to 0.24 inches of deflection so when you push the belt up that's how far it should move up so it should move up be to like pretty much only one notch is what they're saying that's what they're saying and if it's on a side stand it's five to seven millimeters of deflection which is 0.20 to 0.28 inches which is uh anywhere from one full notch to almost one full notch and a half um so I like to actually keep it a little bit on the looser side of the f the uh, we're gonna we're gonna work with on the stand adjustment. So I like to keep it a little bit on the looser side. So that would be anywhere from the four to six millimeters, and I tend to try and keep it um, at about close to about four or four point five. So it's a little bit less than one full notch okay so i'm gonna go ahead and i will push this up i have to just see where's the best place for me to push here because um actually i have the jack pretty far forward i could have put it back a little bit more and that would have gave me a little bit more space over here to measure i may have to move it <clears throat> all right so let me see here all right, we're gonna, well first, 
Let's check this side. We'll see what we get. We'll push it up to 10. And I can't even see where I'm pushing it up to, but I'll zoom this out a little bit. See what I can see. It's going to be hard for you to see. Oh, you can see it. Okay. Uh, somewhat. I'm focused more on the notches. So basically, you're going to push that up and you're looking to see just how far it deflects okay see and that goes up about two that's what it looks like. All right. I'm going to rotate the wheel and actually check it again. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and just check it. That's about, it goes up about two there. From there on up to there, yeah. So that goes up about uh, 0.40. So. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and check that. Yeah, so I like to rotate the wheel 180 degrees and then check the belt again and see because technically you're supposed to check it at the slackest point, but sometimes it's hard to find that slackest point and I'm getting the same measurement pretty much. Actually, not even. I'm getting a little bit of a looser measurement now. Yeah, so that's got to be tightened up a bit. So basically, that's what you're gonna do. All right, you're gonna keep on doing that until, until you get it to where when you push up, put 10 pounds of pressure, it moves up pretty much just one notch or a little bit more than a notch, which equals a little bit more slack. Okay. And you're gonna to want to keep both sides of your uh, your alignment blocks the same amount of distance. You're gonna turn. I'm oh, sorry. You're gonna turn uh, each screw the same amount on each side because you need to keep. They need to both be an even distance away from the set screw. All right, YouTube. And uh, I thank you guys all for watching. And once you're all set with that, then you will tighten down your lock nut. To 110 foot pounds of uh, torque, and uh, you should be good enough to go out for a ride. All right, YouTube, I hope this video was of excellent help to you, and I hope that you were able to get your rear wheel off and then back on successfully. Now, a few things just to remember when you are checking your belt tension, okay? When you're checking that belt tension, just remember to rotate the wheel. You know, I'd say one, or I'd say rotate it 180 degrees, then check your belt tension again and make sure it's still the same. And after every adjustment that you make, recheck your belt tension again and also recheck your alignment. And um, figuring you do that, I think everything should pretty much go well. All right, and uh, I think that's about it. I do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and please hit the like button. See you later.